U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, launching a probe into the business model behind daily fantasy sports firms and whether it violates the law. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is former Quest CEO Joe Naccio and Health South founder Richard Scrushy. Good to see you both, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Good with morning, you. Maria. Joe, you served six years in prison after being convicted of charges of insider trading. Your thoughts on Preet Bharara's probe today and how this environment has changed. Well, Maria, I think today's probe by Preet Bharara is part of what's wrong with our federal criminal justice system. Uh, first of all, if people want to... Uh, you know, gamble or do their job, your skill uh, industry, whatever they're calling it, uh, where's the great harm? I mean, this attorney general or our attorney generals haven't prosecuted a single person for violating our rights with universal surveillance. They don't go after their own elitist political class. And there seems to be kind of a war on business. So I think, you know, he's reeling from his recent uh, loss at the Supreme Court on insider trading, and he's looking to grab headlines. And I, I think that's exactly what's wrong with our criminal justice system. Yeah. It's politicized, and it delegates power to unelected officials to interpret and create new law when that's a legislative function. Richard Scrushy, how do you see it? You, you were convicted on multiple charges and received a sentence close to seven years in prison. Well, I agree with Joe, uh, Maria. I mean, absolutely. I mean, there's an opportunity here for uh, they're successful. Uh, you've got a business that's exploding in terms of its growth. I mean, why not be a target? Uh, there's a lot of glory for the prosecutor to go after a target. I mean, they only go after, I mean, you want to go after some, something that's successful, right? I mean, there's an opportunity to make headlines. There's an opportunity. I mean, let's find out before we go out and announce that we think there might be something wrong, begin to destroy an industry, destroy a company, begin to bring people down. I mean, when you, when you throw that out there, I'm going to look in this, I'm going to do that. Okay, now we, you, you know, you start making it look bad. Now, that will hurt their business because people will back off so they're actually this is a financial problem when you start attacking a company like this and as, as, as Joe said I mean there's a real problem with this yeah. uh, I, you know I, I think you both make a really good point and the environment has changed I mean you've got the US Attorney General Loretta Lynch saying time to hold individuals accountable for white-collar crimes and that's what we saw during forgive me, me for saying but, but during the days when, when when the both of you were well, walking that perp walk you know people wanted to see the the big shots come down oh absolutely there, there was a there was, the tactic was shock called shock and awe you know that's just where 25 fbi agents would raid a company because they thought maybe there was something wrong but now we went through a period of time where they literally did investigate find out if there was someone that should be a target and uh, worked out fines and tried to find solutions if companies were in fact doing something wrong and if someone's doing something wrong and you find out they are in fact guilty of that no problem with prosecuting them but let's don't bring the companies down let's don't destroy the company Right. And, and many times uh, what happens is the customers then leave the company when a company goes under investigation. Right. The, uh, you know, Your reputation is destroyed, destroyed before you even get Absolutely. a shot in court because, Joe, the, whoever is, is calling fraud becomes the judge, the jury, and the execution exactly. right there. Well, public opinion. Well, yeah. Maria, M M Maria, that's one of the great fallacies of our criminal justice system, that you really do get a day in court. Anybody who's been through this process knows by the time you ever get to trial, if you go to trial, and remember, 98% of all federal indictments end in a plea bargain, and then of the 2% that go to trial, the government wins 98% of those. The system is so stacked against you, it's impossible to win. And as Richard was just pointing out, a, an investigation or an indictment against a public corporation is a death sentence because you can't roll over your debt, you can't raise new money, your customers start fleeing, and long before you get to trial, which will take five years before you get there, you're going to go out of business. We saw that with Anderson, even though the Supreme Court overturned that conviction. Yeah. The company went out of business and 50,000 people got laid off. So I think it's irresponsible for these public announcements that they're going to look into a business model. Where's the crime? Have a crime before you prosecute. Don't go looking for one. Mm. Remember, we have 4,800 criminal federal statutes and 300,000 federal regulations that can get, put you in prison. So if the government wants to look for something, they can fabricate it. And when you have universal surveillance by the government on top of that, you stand no chance. I mean, this is a fundamental threat to our freedom and democracy. What about the Supreme Court refusing to hear a case on insider trading involving former Diamondback Capital Portfolio Manager Todd Newman, level global investors Anthony Chasen. Joe, you agree with that decision? 
Absolutely. Look, the, the insider trading laws are some of the most ill-defined laws on the federal register. I think the, I applaud the Supreme Court for turning that one down. Right. I wish they had gone further. We need to have definitions of what insider information really is, what the standards are for materiality, and then we need to go into the whole process of discovery and look at the abuses that the Justice Department regularly does where they withhold exculpatory evidence, yeah. where they intimidate defense witnesses. I mean, you know, look, everybody's for a society where the rule of law applies to everyone. But that means everyone, and that means when the Justice Department abuses the law, they're held responsible. Right. We saw in the Senator Stevens case where the prosecutors withheld critical exculpatory evidence, nothing happened. Yep. Well, okay? look, it's, a, we it's see... important to get your take on this, both of your takes. Mm -hmm. Richard, you, you at Health South had more than $4 billion in revenue, treated more than 100,000 patients a day, not only in the United States, but around the world. You wanted to weigh in on Obamacare this morning. Well, you know, obviously, I think, uh, you know, great idea, let's insure everybody. But the problem we've had is that uh, things that were supposed to happen didn't happen and things uh, surprised us. For example, we're talking doubling now of, uh, of, of, of the payments people are having to buy, pay for their insurance on a monthly and basis. And that's why we're not seeing the economy move, because people may have saved money at the gasoline pump, but they're spending all this money on their affordable care. Well, and, and some of the pro policies have been gutted in terms of the coverage. You've got huge deductibles. Uh, I mean, it's a very difficult situation. Yeah. And you have doctors that are dropping out of the program. You've got even doctors that are saying, I'm not going to practice medicine anymore. Uh, we have some serious problems. I don't think it's working like it was supposed to. All right, we will leave it there. Very good to have you guys, uh, your insights, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Joe Naccio, Richard Scrooge, thanks so much for joining Thank you. us. We appreciate it. Up